In 2013, I decided to meet my enemies. I was a 27-year-old award-winning filmmaker and a proud feminist, and I was determined to expose the dark underbelly of the men's rights movement. For one year, I traveled North America, meeting the leaders and the followers of the men's rights movement, and I spent anywhere from two to four, six, sometimes up to eight hours filming each individual person. I filmed 44 people. And it's, there's an important rule in documentary filmmaking. As an interviewer, you do not interrupt. So I'm asking men's rights activists, MRAs, questions. And I'm getting long answers, their full life story. And it's important to note that for many of these people, they've never been interviewed before. But they've also, many of them, had never been asked, what's your story? What makes you who you are? So it was just pouring, pouring out of them. So months and months and months of this goes by. And in the moment, I didn't realize it. But now looking back, I can see that while I was conducting my interviews, I wasn't actually listening. I was hearing them speak. I knew the camera was recording. But in that moment of sitting across from my enemy, I wasn't listening. What was I doing? I was anticipating. I was waiting to hear a sentence, or even just a couple of words in succession, that proved what I wanted to believe that I had found the misogynist, the ground zero of the war on women. A couple of moments I thought I had it. There was one men's rights activist that said, just walk outside and look around. Everything you see was built by a man. His statement felt anti-women. I felt my jaw clench. If I were with my friends, I would have delivered a sassy, oh really? as a warning that a rant worthy of a mic drop and a bow was fast approaching. But I sat quietly, as a documentarian should, while removing all the space between my upper and lower molars. <laughs> <laughs> After a year of filming, I was reviewing the 100 plus hours of footage I had gathered, replaying and transcribing it, which, believe me when I say, no one will ever listen to you more than someone who transcribes your words. Uh. Write that down. <laughs> so I was transcribing, which meant I was replaying the footage over and over again, getting every word meticulously. And I realized that my initial knee-jerk reactions to certain statements weren't warranted. And my being offended didn't hold up to intense scrutiny. Was that statement about men having built the skyscrapers and the bridges anti-women? What would be the gender reverse scenario? Maybe a feminist saying, just look around. Every person you see was birthed by a woman. It's a powerful statement. And it's true. Is it anti-male? I don't think so. I think it's acknowledging our unique and valued contributions to our society. But luckily, while I was filming The Red Pill, I kept a video diary, which ended up tracking my evolving views. All right, well now I want to see the fucking thing. Review incoming. It's all right. I watched The Red Pill, and I took notes. Ready? Here's the notes I took. Can you see that? You see that right there? That's a fucking note I took. No, seriously, actually, like, it was a really, it was a really good documentary. It was very well done. It was shot very well. It was very well edited. I mean, it was some amazing editing in it. Um, it, it was a really good documentary. It was really balanced. Like, you know, it was about men's rights activists. But... It, it was about men's rights, you know, it, it wasn't about feminism versus men's rights. It was just pretty much about men's rights. It was really cool. It didn't have an agenda to it other than the agenda 
that was being portrayed. It was very unbiased. The the lady that filmed it, she uh, is is was whatever a feminist. Um, she was pretty hardcore about it. I, if you watch the rest of the little speech that she gave that I show in the beginning, you know she talks about the way that she reacted whenever she heard about men's issues and things of that nature, like suicide rates and uh, homelessness and uh, uh, paternity, things of that nature. Um, that she always wanted to turn the subject back around to women, and multiple times in the course of the, of the movie, she says, you know, I still have this feeling that I want to turn it back to women's issues. And, you know, like the, the moment of realization was very interesting to see when she was like, you know, how can I honestly say that I believe that feminism is for equality if I'm hearing about men's issues and I automatically want to turn it around to make it you know, like a thing that's actually against women. So it was very interesting to watch. It was very interesting to watch her journey. She she was uh yeah she didn't put as many of the little video diaries that she took through the course of the film. She she didn't put as many of them into it as I had hoped she would have. Um, that was one of the things that really sold me on on watching it. You know, I I've been in this for you know a while now like I've I've always kind of seen the <laughs> the way that men are portrayed in the world and I've always kind of had a problem with it you know that's always kind of been one of my things but you know for somebody that you know never really been exposed to it you know it, it can be very shocking like it was it was pretty brutal like some of the stories that guys told about uh, the marriages that they were in that went south how the women, you know, treated the, the children in the situation, what was done to them. Um, speaking about the choices that men have uh, when a woman has a child, um, or when a couple has a child. Um, about how some women would give away, were giving away the children in, to adoption. And the men didn't even have an opportunity to <laughs> even ask for custody. You know, like crazy stuff crazy stuff and uh the the one section about the Boko Haram was really eye-opening like even for me you know it's all old hat to me I I understand the men's right movements and you know I, I get it but like even that was really shocking to me uh I'm, I'm not going to describe any of it I, I I really encourage everybody to watch it it was amazing um, and they had a lot of female men's rights activists. She even interviewed feminists. And it was very interesting because, you know, the way they cut it together, it's, it's almost leading. You know what I mean? Like, you have the feeling. It gives you the feeling that you're being led. But if you listen to what's being said, it's the comparison. You know, here's a men's rights activist saying... You know, men have no rights as far as paternity. There's nothing they can do. Woman has all the control. And that's fucking it. There's, there's nothing for a man after that. And then it flips to a feminist talking about how, well, you know, men's, men's portion of the choice is before sex. And after, you know, after the, the conception... They shouldn't even have an option because it's, it has nothing to do with them from that point on. But it does, <laughs> you know. Like that's it's their life too. They got to be daddy. They got to pay for that. They got to be supportive in whatever way they can possibly be. You know that sort of thing still has to go on, and it's state enforced. So you know, it, it was really interesting to see the way that it was cut together. I think it was done very well. It really didn't come off as fuck bitches. Like that was a joke. It didn't come off at all like fuck bitches. It really didn't. It came off so much more like, why are you fucking us so much? <laughs> like, it it, it 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 harkened back to videos I've seen of interviews of women back in the days when women couldn't work, when they were fighting for actual equality. It it seemed it sounded so similar. Different subjects. Certainly the different gender, but nevertheless, it sounded very much the same. It was very odd to watch, um, you know, as immersed into the subject as I am. Uh, so, 
yeah and it's it's all you know it's all but what about us but when you hear about some of the things that they're talking about and you really think about the nature of the way things are if you're willing to open your mind to it it can really I honestly think that it can really change points of views you know it's one of those things that you see like when I saw blackfish um the first time I saw blackfish I was like I understand why the because it was after the whole you know, thing it was years later and I was like I understand why there was such a you know fuss about this documentary because it really made you think it really made you want to open your mind to what you were seeing and what was going on and no wonder it caused the change that it did and this was one of those documentaries for me I think it, it's gonna be that documentary for a lot of other people I think it's gonna be one of those things where people that have misconceptions about reality are gonna see it and they're gonna be like holy shit like if there was anything that I can understand why feminists would be protesting it boy golly it's this fucking this movie because Jesus Christ one of those things that make you all look crazy no matter who you are Thank mm -hmm. you.